This video is to demonstrate the stone factory I've created in Minecraft on my server. If you're on my server and you're looking for it, it's right in front of the gigantic brick house. There's another one inside of the castle, which is in that direction. The reason I'm making this video is because I've seen several videos of stone factories online, and when I made mine based on one, I ended up simplifying it considerably into this. I made this out of glass partly because it looked neat and partly because I wanted to be able to see exactly what was going on inside. So in this design, you stand in front of this block, and you just point about here and cut. And you'll notice the blocks come left, right, or down. The water pulls them toward you and you start picking them up after a few seconds. This is about the most efficient design I could possibly get. If I just had water going forward, then about half the blocks would go in lava. Some would even just sit there. So having the water going in both directions from it, I started pulling the extra ones. The only ones that end up burning are the ones that go basically straight back. Since the direction is random, you also notice there's an obsidian block underneath, so I can't accidentally cut it. So I can pretty much just tape my mouse button down and come back with a whole bunch of stone afterward. Because we practice what I call sustainable Minecraft on my server, this made it possible to not worry about dropping stone while working on things like the gigantic castle that you can see in the distance. I'll be doing some videos later on all these different things that we have on the server because I'm quite proud of some of them. Okay, so this is really simple the way it works. What happens is there's a lava source block and a water source block. The two fall down to the same level. The trick was to have the lava falling first so that it would flow forward by one. So you create a hole. You've got a hole that the lava falls straight into. You've got the spot that the water falls straight into. And you've got the different directions that they can flow in. Basically like that. So this would be where you would stand. I'll be fixing this up later and getting rid of it, but for the purpose of the demonstration. Basically what we're looking at is that. You stand, I guess you'd be a little bit less. Stand more or less there. Lava falls there. So if this were theoretically the lava flow, it would fall there and flow forward by one. It would actually flow forward further, but not once it gets started. And then we've got the lava going up a little bit higher than the water. Now imagine this gray wool is the water put the water down, it falls down, and it hits the flowing lava. Flowing lava, as we know, when it hits water, becomes cobblestone. So that block is the cobblestone that you keep on mining away. The water then flows in every direction once it hits an obstacle. So of course I've got glass in place, and it might take a little finagling with the glass to get it to flow in exactly the ways that you want. But you get the water to flow in the three directions from it, it's only one water source block, although it doesn't hurt to have a well like this one here so you can get more blocks and tinker with it. Once you get the water to flow in the right direction, so just cover it over, put the block in the way, make sure you've got that obsidian underneath, which, come to think of it, you may want to put down before you start putting lava in there. And you can make all the cobblestone that you need. I haven't actually needed to use this because cobblestone is freakishly common. If you really need cobblestone that badly, just eat a mountain. But, if you need an excuse to worry less about your cobblestone, then this is the way to do it. Or if you're truly lazy, and you don't want to cheat to get your cobblestone, but you don't want to have to mine it the old-fashioned way, then go ahead. <laughs> 